The concept of Makharij and Sifatul Huruf is the most fundamental concept in the study of Tajweed. It is essentially the basis upon which all Tajweed rules are built, and without it, it would be very difficult to really master Qur'an recitation. However, it is among the least favorite topics to study for many learners because of how technical and dry it might get. Still, if you're starting to learn the Tajweed, or you've even learned the rules of Tajweed, following this lesson series would give you an important insight into the pronunciation of Arabic letters and solidify the basic knowledge to be more sure of your Qur'an recitation, insha'Allah. So, let's get started. First of all, what is makharij and sifat? The word makharij is plural of makhraj, and literally, it means an exit point. And in terms of tajweed, it refers to the articulation point from which a sound is released. As for the word sifat, it is the plural of the word sifa, which means a characteristic. So, sifatul huruf is the characteristics of letters. Now, let's start with the first and the more basic concept, which is makharij al huruf. In order to get to know where letters come from exactly, we should first learn this chart to give us an idea about the organs that produce the sounds. The first thing that we notice is that there are five major areas in this chart. And they are the oral cavity, which is all this dark blue and green area. So all of this is the oral cavity. We call it in Arabic, Al-Jawf. The second area is the throat, which is this dark blue area. And we call it in Arabic, Al-Halq. So, Al-Halq is part of Al-Jawf, the oral cavity. Third, the tongue, which is Al-Lisan. Next, we have the lips. These are Al-Shafatayn. And finally, we have the nasal cavity, which is Al-Khayshum. Each of these five areas contains several points of articulation. Each of these articulation points is called makhraj. There are in total 17 makhraj, or 17 points of articulation. These 17 points produce all the sounds in Arabic. You can also call it 17 devices producing the sounds. Each one of these devices has a name and produce a number of sounds. It is important to know that there is a difference among linguists and grammarians on how many makharij they are. Some say they are 16, others say they are 14. But in my study and in this course, I will be depending on the division made by Ibn al-Jazari, since it is the closest to the study of the Qur'an and the easier one to understand, insha'Allah. But how could linguists determine the place from which a sound is produced? Well, they would use one of two methods, and through these methods, they could determine where and how a letter is produced. The first method is saying the letter with shadda on it. So, the letter qaf, for example, we would then say, And for the letter ba, we say b, b. Another way is using hamza with fatha on it, followed by the consonant you want to test. So then it would sound like this: aq, aq, s, s. This could also be a good method for you to compare your point of articulation for a particular letter to make sure that you're pronouncing the letter from the correct makharaj. Alright, now that we know the basics of studying makharaj, let us start with the first and the easiest area of articulation, which is 
the oral cavity. This area is the makhraj of the three long vowels, which are alif, the second is waw preceded by dhamma, and that is al waw al and last is ya preceded by kasra, and it is also called al ya al Now, naturally, we are adding the word maddiya after waw and ya. Because there is another version of these two letters in which they are not functioning as a long vowel. And their pronunciation will be slightly different from their pronunciation as long vowels. But now we're only focusing on the three med letters. These three med letters do not have a specific point that they finish at, like other consonants do. Instead, these vowels finish with the stopping of the sound. You're basically pushing air through your throat, but that is not the only thing you're doing. The shape of your lips and other organs in your mouth determines what sound this flow of air produces. To understand more what I mean, let us start by the first one, which is Alif. Alif is always preceded by a letter with Fatha. So it is always used as a med letter. When pronouncing alif in Arabic, the only thing you should be paying attention to is the opening of your mouth. It should not be too wide open, and at the same time, it shouldn't be too closed either. It should be somewhere in between, an average opening. Like when we say, Ma So the opening of the mouth should be an average one to produce the alif properly. As for the well, it is the same process, except that the lips will be in an O shape, again in an average position. This means that the O shape of your lips should not be too open or too wide, and at the same time it shouldn't be too tight either. قَالُوا يَلْوُونَ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ If the shape of the mouth is too open, a hint of the sound of alif will be mixed with the waw, and that is not correct, of course. There are other common mistakes that could be related to that sound of waw, and I explained those extensively in a separate lesson. So check that one out if you want to learn more about the common mistakes of the sound of well. The final sound is the ye. This sound is very similar to the way the alif is produced. But the only difference is that the tongue, the middle of the tongue, is raised when it comes to pronouncing the e sound, or al ya ul So we say... E C at F So these were the three letters that are produced from the mouth cavity or from Al Jawf A U E So in this first lesson we had the introduction to the concept of Maharij and Sifat. We learned the five main areas from which a sound is produced. We learned the names of some articulation organs. And we also started with learning the first three letters involving the mouth cavity or al jawf. Let me know in the comments if you find this series useful to you or not. Your comments really help me plan my coming lessons and helping as many people as possible. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.